So someone's going to disagree with me, but I think book talk has reached cult status. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Small Entertainment and welcome to another episode of what's not a cult, but feels like a cult book talk edition. Now I know that you're going to be like, this isn't a cult, but I could argue that none of the things that I've talked about in this what's not a cult, but feels like a cult series are cults. We could argue that entirely. The thing is though, is that book talk has some power and I think that that's something we can look at. But first, let me tell you about the sponsors for this video, Native. I think until you really sit down and take time to think about it, you never really realize how much plastic is in every single thing we use in day-to-day -day life. That it's actually single use and it's just gonna end up in a landfill after we're done with it. But that's one of the many reasons that Native's plastic-free deodorant tubes are great for you and for me. I think any little choices you can make to kind of make your life a little more sustainable are great. And so little changes like switching over to Native deodorant, which has plastic-free packaging, is a good place to start. Native's plastic-free deodorant is their same formula as their traditional deodorant with the one change of plastic-free packaging. All their deodorants are vegan, aluminum-free, paraben-free, and cruelty-free. And still, it's made with familiar and simple ingredients like coconut oil and shea butter. This time around, they sent me more of my favorite of their coconut and vanilla, as well as their lilac and white tea, and I also got their lavender and rose. But as always, they have a wide array of scents, so I'm sure you'll find something that you'll enjoy. Three plastic-free deodorants are usually $39, but if you use my link and code SWELL3, you'll get them for 26. That's over 33% off. And with code SWELL3, you also get 20% off all body washes and toothpaste, like their tie-dye vanilla cupcake. Code SWELL3 to get your discount, and thank you again, Native, for sponsoring this video. Let me start by explaining book talk. Book talk is the book community on TikTok. There are two different categories, technically, of book talk. There's more technically, but the two main ones that are the most prevalent are book talk and spicy book talk, or smut talk, erotica talk, spice talk, however you wanna look at it. But it's pretty much book talk, but for spicy books and erotica, okay? But there's a lot of overlap. I'm gonna be combining the two. I will try and credit as many people that I mention as I can in this because there's so a lot. I can't possibly be like, here are the major players of book talk. I just can't do that because there's so many. I previously had my friend Paulina, who was also out here in LA. Her and I used to work together at the coffee shop. She is pretty big in the book talk space. And so I talk with her about book Book talk on the Swell Shenanigans podcast, my podcast. I will have that episode linked down below. She also helped me with a bit of the research for this video because there was a video that I was trying to find and she was able to find the girl that was referenced and the guy that we were talking about very quickly. So shout out to Paulina for helping with this video. But Brian is a mutual of mine on TikTok and he actually works in the publishing industry the traditional publishing industry. There's kind of back and forth on what's ideal, whether traditional publishing is better than self-publishing. A lot of people have self-published in BookTok when they've written their own stuff. They really hype up Kindle Unlimited on BookTok because it's like one fee and then they still get paid from Kindle Unlimited reads and things like that. So a lot of self-publishing authors that publish through Kindle Unlimited and Amazon and all of that are very hyped up on BookTok. And that's mainly because they are giving a ton, it's, it's kind of like the content creation beast where you're giving a lot of content and so it's easier for them to put out books at a faster speed than someone who is traditionally published in his contracts and has all these other things they have to do. But he works in a traditional publishing house. He said in one of his videos that they have not seen a marketing giant so effective as book talk since Oprah's book club and equated the two. <laughs> when I bring that up to people, they're like, I disagree. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. But then I just, I, I tell them. <laughs> I tell them about this bad boy, Ice Planet Barbarians. So I think that this is where the crux of this video is gonna come in, because I think this is the easiest way to explain the power of book talk. We could also talk about Kissing the Coronavirus, which is a book and book series that were both published through Amazon for 99 cents. I've previously done two videos on that series um, and I heard about that through TikTok. There's plenty of other books that we can talk about, but I think the one that's the most powerful that we can explain 
is this one. This was a self-published series, okay? I believe there was 13 books by the time that TikTok found it. And it was in sometime early of 2021 that TikTok got a hold of this series. I have also previously made a video about Ice Planet Barbarians and reviewed, I believe, the first three books. And later in January this year, I will be going on my editor Williams podcast to talk about two more of the books in the series because they talk about books on the podcast. And he was like, you have to come on. I was like, I'm gonna make you guys read Ice Planet Barbarians. And they are going to suffer with me. It's gonna be fun. I'm not gonna explain the plot of Ice Planet Barbarians to you because again, I've already reviewed the first book, which is this one. And I have gotten that one through Kindle Unlimited. This one I paid real money for. It is signed by Mix Ruby Dixon herself. It also came with stickers and a bookmark because I am a hoarder and I'm back in hoarding books. But what's interesting about this book and I do think is great is it's a special release and there's extra sections in this. There's uh, a whole extra chapter and story with Bechtel and Georgie, who are the original couple for Ice Planet Barbarians. And Ruby Dixon herself, the author of this, has her own view of that. And she wrote about it in this edition. She goes on to talk about how uh, in 2014, she used the Ruby Dixon pen name to dip into uncharted ebook territory. No holds barred. At that point, I had gone with Minaj Bikers because why the fuck not? And I was burned out on them. I don't know if you know this, but most motorcycle clubs do not feature nice people. I know, crazy, right? She talks about how she originally released the books in serial format and then released the second book in serial format later that year. As of book three, readers had expressed unhappiness about the serial format, so I decided to do a regular novel size release instead of serial chunks, and I just kept on writing. I loved the tribe I'd created, loved the heroines, loved the setting, loved the resonance concept, loved everything about it. Fast forward to May of 2021, six years after I'd first published Ice Planet Barbarians. I was deep into the spinoff series Ice Home, and I started to get messages from fans. Did you know your books were mentioned on TikTok? Great, I'd comment and think nothing of it. Sales started to tick up on Ice Planet Barbarians out of no Nowhere. I thought that was odd, but pleasing. My popular little niche series kept on finding new readers. Then sales didn't just tick up, they exploded. Uh-oh. Was there some hidden controversy on the internet that I'd somehow missed and was moving books? Was this a fluke? I was explaining this fluke to my parents at lunch one day when my mom shook her head. Someone on your Instagram said you were trending on TikTok. TikTok for books? All I know about TikTok was that people made videos showing they ate Tide Pods. So I downloaded the app to peek in and was surprised to see how many views I was getting. People were making fan art, people were dressing up as my characters, bookstores were creating TikTok clips about ordering the books because demand was so high. The series wasn't unpopular, but it was still an older series at that point and she was working on a spinoff and for the most part it was still gaining new readers, but it was mostly untouched. And then TikTok, got a hold of it. What's not mentioned here is when it got to, I think number one, like the sequel to The Martian came out, but because of TikTok and because of the hype surrounding these books and people losing their minds over it, Ice Planet Barbarians still was like filling up the number one slot on Amazon. It's no longer there, I don't believe, but it's interesting to see that something like an old series that again, published in 2014, could then be turned into a special edition now and be traditionally published. And you can go and you can go to Barnes and Noble right now and buy this copy of this book. You also could have gone a couple months ago because again, Barnes and Noble started ordering the other covers where it is like a woman draped over a man in a blue chest. I mean, you know what? Good for Ruby. Ruby, get your sales. The series is fine. It's fun. And someone's gonna be like, it's not high literature. Who cares? It's Fun. I'm not a fan of the pregnancy trope, and that's basically, this, the whole book is breeding kinks, so keep that in mind, basically. But I just wanted to bring up this example because I think this is the best example of the power of book talk. There's also been other people. Alex Astor, she is an author who got a book deal because of TikTok and book talk. She made a video that was like, would you read a book that has and explain basically the main plot elements and all of that of her book, how TikTok got this YA author a six figure book deal. Despite the pandemic, 2020 was a banner year for Alex Astor. With the space of a few months, the 25 year old had two big wins. Her debut song, Divine, went viral on TikTok. She published her first book, a middle grade novel titled Curse of the Night Witch, which received a circ Kirkus Award, wow, and was chosen as one of Amazon's best children's book of 2020. Now Astor struck gold once again, this time with the March 13 teaser video for her YA novel, Light Lark. At the time of this writing, the video has racked up 1.2 million views, 278,000 likes, and more than 7,000 comments, and it just scored Astor a six-figure book deal with Amulet Books. Within a week after the video went viral on TikTok, Astor tells Bustle, Light Lark was at auction and I was offered six figures. Publishers saw this huge audience 
audience that already just based on the premise, we're so enamored with the concept. Someone's gonna be like, I disagree. I don't think you should have to have an audience to get a book deal or an acting gig or whatever. It's something that we're seeing more and more of. It's the new nepotism. I don't think it's gonna go away, but I do think that that is impressive that people were already excited about the concept and then that got her a book deal. Even though again, she was already published but again, not for YA. The publishing industry is weird. I will say that traditionally published industry because for as many industries as have shifted around because of social media and everything like that, the traditional publishing industry hasn't changed much aside from they probably spend less money on authors. It's kind of difficult to explain because I don't know much about it. So therefore I cannot translate it a whole lot to you, especially with spicy book talks. There's a lot of people who that's how they get a lot of pre-orders or pre-downloads for their books for Kindle Unlimited is they just promote and make a ton of content about their books that they are still working on or are releasing at a certain date. And so they do a bunch of hype like, oh, do you wanna read a book about this? Or, oh, imagine POV, you come home and a guy in a scream mask is there looking sexy as shit and you're, you wanna fuck him. Things like that, you know? And then, <laughs> Amanda, what's on your For You page? <laughs> Other books that have been really uh, hyped up by TikTok, obviously Song of Achilles, The Cruel Prince, The Love Hypothesis, Den of Vipers, the God, Devil's Night series, is that what it's called? Super, a lot of dark romance, which is basically dark smut, lots of that. My copy of Den of Vipers though, Hermes apparently is very anti-smut. Um, he tore the book apart. Books by Tessa Bailey have been doing very well, but again, romance is a very popular industry. They make a dumb amount of money. They just aren't, credited in the same way that other genres of literature are credited. They're not the respectable genre. And I'm saying that in quotes because that's not how I feel. That's just the way we are told, basically. I don't want to imply that these books are only being successful because of TikTok. I'm just saying that, you know, these are books that are being co-opted by TikTok. Obviously, Iceland Barbarians was not doing too bad without TikTok. It just skyrocketed everything. And now there's a special edition. Side note, I do think we're gonna get a book deal. I think there's gonna be a book deal. I think this is the first step. I think it's coming. And I would just like to remind everyone that I am 5'2 and I can make any man look tall. <laughs> Should I talk about the men of book talk? Not, not the men of book talk, the men against book talk or book talk is against these men. Should I, should I do that? I'm not saying that the entirety of book talk is all women, but it's the most forward facing women. There's also plenty of male authors that are very active in book talk and I don't want to erase them at all. But there are some guys who see some benefits from being involved in book talk. For example, the Off Campus series, I believe, was very popular for a time. I read the first book, liked it well enough, didn't like it enough to read the rest of the books. I talked about this with Paulina on the podcast, but I liked it well enough. But there was a guy who was a hockey player on TikTok and everyone was like, oh my God, you look like Garrett. You should read this series. And this guy got a large influx of followers because all the TikTok girlies wanted him to be Garrett, their hockey college boyfriend. It's interesting. It's an interesting way to gain followers. If you are an, a male man, <laughs> if you are someone who can co-opt being someone's book boyfriend and bring someone's book boyfriend to life because that's how they refer to these heroes in the romance genre, if you can bring them to life, you've got a pretty pretty instantaneous following, but then you run the risk of if there's ever a chance where this turns into a movie or the author is like, I want this person to play him in this thing. You run the risk of the audience then immediately shifting to that person, whether it's you know a live action version or just a new fixation, you run that risk. So for a career wise and social media, I don't recommend it. For just a little bit of ego boost, go for it, have fun. Do whatever you want. But then there's also men that apparently people find attractive. And so they try to get them to read books that they like. Anyway, Corey, <laughs> Corey Wynn made an account called Corey Wynn can read or can't read. I believe it's can read. And he was recommended the book, The Love Hypothesis. The Love Hypothesis, more like, more like a book that I'm gonna read. 
TikTok didn't like that. Like I said, they very much like the love hypothesis. I've read the love hypothesis. I liked it well enough. I did not think it was dripping in smut the way that TikTok made it sound. TikTok has a problem with misrepresenting a lot of books, whether it's smut, romance, fantasy. They keep trying to call uh, the cruel prince enemies to lovers when romance is barely even a main plot in those books. It's more politics. Miscategorizing things, I guess you could say. Like the, the genre system exists in traditional publishing and things like that for a reason. It's not great always and a lot of it, it's not perfect, but for the most part, a lot of it fits for a reason. When you miscategorize things or misrepresent things, then you run the risk of someone, for example, giving you three stars when you loved the book, but you pitched it to them as this super smutty, dirty book, and there's one scene, and the only dirty talk is it'll fit. You know, like that's it. I like the love hypothesis, but you guys made me think that they were gonna be doing it on the lab table every two pages. <laughs> Another book they did, I, it may have been that, where he put it in the toilet. People not a fan of that, not a fan of him, you know, kind of trying to cozy up to book talk. There's a lot of people being like, I'm glad we're not falling for that, you know, and it's a lot of that on TikTok. But then there's also my personal favorite, Chad. Yes, his name is Chad. TikTok does a whole lot of recommendations for books. Book talk, spicy book talk. They do like books that stuck with me, books that turn you into that girl, gone girl vibes, you know, things like that. Variety of different topics, both spice, YA, just fantasy, mystery. There's even nonfiction book recommendations. Okay, lots of different categories. I think it's delightful, especially if it's smut. Hi, I liked this porn. Here you go. I think that's fine. I don't think there's a problem with that. But Chad saw a problem with that. And I couldn't find the initial video because uh, he deleted all of his videos. She did not. So the uh, original book talk, spicy book talk account is Fit Teacher Rachel, okay? And all her video was spicy books that have stayed with me. And she got to the sweetest oblivion, birthday girl, and kings of quarantine before Chad pulled up. Here is the original Chad video he stitched me he too. kept deleting my comments, which were nice. So Buck Talk came for him. God, why? Why do the spicy book girls always want to act like them talking about the shit like very openly and as loud as they can? Why y'all want to act like that isn't fucking weird? See, I had a spicy book girl when I was in high school. She was in my class, right? And she got caught several times doing weird stuff. She got asked to not bring in books several times. She got books taken away. And uh, I guess not everybody's high school caught these girls and told them that this was fucking weird. Like, this shit is not classier just because it's in a book. All right? It doesn't matter where you're getting off at. The internet, the strip club, a hole in the wall somewhere. Porn is porn. You don't see guys screaming about videos on the internet. I don't know why girls feel the need to do this shit. So his video um, is just, <laughs> I don't like this guy. I'm not even gonna pretend to like, pretend that I like him or that I'm being unbiased. I don't like him. I think it's really weird. Um, this was an interesting hill to go in on and an interesting hill to die on. He later deleted his videos. Um, there's two main ones and I'll pull up the other one as well. Both I think are really dumb and really weird and I'm not surprised the TikTok and the book talk and spicy book talk community went in on him. I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> I do think this is the example of the cult of book talk of them uniting with a common enemy. And so we saw this with Corey a little less, less, less aggressively, but even booksellers, Barnes and Noble, one location, I don't want to say all Barnes and Nobles, but one location, and I could not find the original video. I'm thinking that the corporate made them take it down. Chad became so prevalent in the book talk community that he had his face printed out and put on a display for spicy book talk that said books that Chad wouldn't want you to read or something along those lines with his face inside this Barnes and Noble. But basically Chad is saying that it's weird to be loud and proud about reading spicy books and then goes on to say porn is porn and all of that. No one's denying that reading smut and watching porn are like different ends of the same pool. Let's go with that. This is all a pool, okay? It's all a pool and I think my thing is as long as you're paying for your shit, who cares? If I pay for this or I pay for my OnlyFans accounts that I choose to buy into, you know, like, well, who cares? But then he goes on to make up what I think is this fictional woman, <laughs> how he had a spicy book girl. And by he had a spicy book girl, he means there was a girl in his high school. 
I don't think you had her, bro, but okay. And she was doing weird stuff and they kept asking her to not bring books in and all of that. So he looks older than, he looks older. He's probably in his thirties. I'm 24. I was in high school when 50 Shades of Grey, the movies were first coming out, okay? I think the first movie came out while I was still in high school. And so I had friends who were reading the books or what was more common at the time, we're reading fan fiction inspired by the book, which is funny because fan fiction inspired by fan fiction, like can turn into a book and then it's inspired by more fan fiction. Kind of funny. And they were reading that and they were not, it's not like they were, it was pretty subtle. Like re reading smut does not automatically mean that you're doing it one handed. It's sure there are plenty of people who do that and reading smut actually gets them turned on and whatever, and who cares? It's another thing to be reading smut in public because again, I've done it. I know plenty of people who have, and they do it with the greatest poker face of all time. It doesn't mean that they're also doing weird shit and making weird noises and doing whatever it was that Phyllis was doing on that one episode of The Office when she was listening to Fifty Shades of Grey. There's plenty of people who know how to act in public while also reading erotica or spicy books in public. And he's kind of explaining that like, that's what this girl was potentially doing. I don't think this girl exists. I think he's just putting his nose into things that he doesn't belong in, but that's just me. The next video that he talks about, which I, I'm, I've only seen the clips of it. I have not seen the full video. Like I said, everything's been deleted and I found only re-uploads of them. But he then goes on to say that this girl was told multiple times to not bring these books to school and that these women who are now recommending spicy books on TikTok are the women who never got told to not bring these books to school and that they just didn't have this like discipline out of them when they were in high school. And so now they promote it on TikTok. And I think that that's a little infantilizing. I think that's a little bullshit because these are grown women and they can do whatever the fuck they want. If I decide tomorrow that I want to start promoting smut books on TikTok and doing my roundups of smut that I liked, I have every right to do that as an adult woman. People always talk about, and we talked about this previously, TikTok being Tumblr 2.0. Tumblr is being becoming even more unusable with like tags and all of that, like Apple is helping them super fun or Google, one of the two, is helping them make it even more unusable for users even more so than it was now. And the difference between Tumblr and TikTok is that TikTok is very public. And for the most part, Tumblr was very private. I think that the whole like TikTok is public is not a discussion we need to be having with adult women or adults in general. It's you put that on the internet, It's you can have that conversation if you want. I see dumb shit on that app all the time. And I'm like, are you admitting this on Beyonce's internet? Like, what are we doing? But I just, I, I think that her video was just recommending books. They just happened to be spite. I truly don't know why he got so up in arms about it. I brought this up with my dad last night. I was on the phone with my father talking about how I was gonna make this video. And I brought up Chad and I asked my father a very valid question. Do men even like women? <laughs> because, and I brought that up in regards to the next video. And our minds say, wow, that's a hypersexual woman. That is a red flag for many men. Just being super hypersexual all the time, not about- Again, if he had just made a video and just said, do girls not realize it's really weird and men think it's weird when they're super out and loud and proud about reading smut and reading erotica and reading porn. It's not classier because it's in a book. Like I've never claimed it's classier. <laughs> I don't think anyone really has. But if he had just made the video, it probably wouldn't have been a big deal, but he stitched it with another creator and that makes it more targeted in my opinion. It's a little, little more aggressive and a, just weird of him to do that. If he had just made the video, it would have been one thing. Maybe it would have had some backlash, but it would have been a flicker compared to what ended up actually happening. So he made the follow-up video once people went in on him. And the follow-up video, I don't think helps because it just talked about how men think it's weird for women to read erotica because according to men, that points to women being hypersexual and men think that's weird, which is why I asked my dad, do men even like women? <laughs> That's odd to me. Am I, I don't have as many males watching me now as I did before. My audience now is like 60, 30, mainly women. And I'm assuming that's because of the type of content and the fact that I do more TikTok videos now, but I do still have a lot of men that interact with my content, a lot of men on my Facebook. And so I, I'm asking you genuinely, do you like women? Not sex. Do you like women? If you are attracted to women, if you identify as a male who is attracted to women, do you like women? Cause things like this made me think you don't. It's very weird. Like, it's like, it's weird to me when guys are like, oh no, she's so stupid. I'm just gonna fuck her. And I'm like, okay, what are you doing? What is that? You know, like, 
Sometimes I think men just want to be in relationships so they have someone to condescend to. That's what I truly believe. I truly believe that. It's very, mm, like, is this, I, I don't even, I, I don't date much. That's just me. But like my friends that day, I've never known them to date men who have a problem with my friends wanting to have sex with them. Like, like they're interested in the sex. Like that's very, this is, am I wrong? This is weird, right? I'm not following. <laughs> Someone in a relationship explains to me, no, this is weird. This is weird to me. And anyway, he later went on and deleted his videos. He did not delete his account. His account still exists. I think he has a, he's a series called Bad Dating Advice or Bad Luck Dating Advice. I don't know, it's something like that. It's again, sharing his opinion and all of that. This is his vibe is just, I, I think that he probably just went after the wrong people because he wasn't expecting book talk to just swarm this man. And again, Barnes and No, I, I think they had them delete the video. That's what I think. I think they were like, take that down. Like we don't need that type of press. There is, is still times where people now even mention Chad and everyone knows who they're talking about. So that was the part of the cult that I wanted to mention with that is the one unifying villain, <laughs> but also just the kumbaya is not the word. Community, that's it community of book talk and smut talk and spicy talk and whatever book talks you want to talk it all about. They, there was an enemy. They went after one person and everyone was like, okay, asshole. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about that. Okay. Cause some people turn to religion for community and you know, some people turn to book talk. I'm sure there are a zillion other examples of book talk exhibiting cult-like behavior. Hoarding is something that seems to be very much promoted. There's jokes about uh, people going into debt over books. And I mean, Hey, I mentioned book hoarding earlier in this video as well. You know, I last Last year in 2020, I literally sold close to 200 books to get rid of my collection that I'd had since arguably middle school. I'm now growing my TBR lists and piles and I'm on a book ban. I didn't participate in the 50% off hardcovers Barnes and Noble sale for that exact reason. I'm trying to cut back on buying books for 2022. I have stacks, I need to get through them. I'm gonna do it. Hoarding is something that always comes up in these types of what's not a cult, but feels like a cult videos. The collecting of a books does seem to be a running theme in most book talkers, especially popular book talkers. They they have the very detailed, very stocked bookshelves behind them, the walls of books. Some people have full walls, like 16 foot high bookshelves, full of books. I think some people are buying more, you know, secondhand than they're letting on. There are a variety of ways to get cheaper books. I buy quite a few of my books from thrift books, which are pretty much all used in various conditions. They always saved me a ton of money when I was in college because they sell a lot of textbooks as well. I always recommend them. I would like for Book Talk to promote their local libraries more. Some have gotten very good about it where they talk about, you know, I have this book on hold and things like that. I think that that would be a really great thing of people promoting books. But again, there is a certain, I mean, I deal with it myself. That's why I'm like, just not even letting myself go to Barnes and Noble. There's a certain brain go burr when brain buy books. <laughs> There is that. No one's talked about going into debt, but I mean, books aren't cheap, you know? And so there is that, it's kind of implied, you know, if you look at some bookshelves, you can see that they have made easily a thousand dollars worth of books just behind them in one video. Cause it just, it stacks up, you know, the 24.99s add up and then their sales stacks and all of that, whether you buy them on Amazon or secondhand or whatever. I, I don't know. There was going to be a book talk con at one point that was discussed. I don't think it ever actually happened because I never heard anything else about it. If it does end up happening, you know I will be there. I think that as far as cults go, I guess you could argue that none of the things I've talked about are harmful. And I'm not gonna say that this is harmful. I think that there is things in the book talk community that are not discussed. The hoarding, I think is something that needs to be discussed. And again, I think that there's other options like libraries that need to be promoted more. It's interesting because some people are very anti Amazon, but then they have no problem promoting how many books they buy off of Amazon and things like that within book talk. It's, it's interesting to see. Probably gonna be it for this video. Um, I know this was a little more all over the place, but that's just because it, it's kind of hard for me to make an entire encompassing video on book talk and the cult of book talk in one video because there's so many different subsets for it. Again, I talked about this at length with someone involved in the book talk community, my friend Polina on the podcast. That'll be linked down below. I will be linking all the accounts down below that I mentioned. That's going to be it. Reminder, I have a podcast, the Swell Shenanigans podcast, new episodes every Wednesday. Reminder, I have merch like that mug linked back there. Shout out to my patron. Thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you'd also support my own Patreon, leave this down below. If you'd like to follow me on my social media, that'll be up here. And that's going to be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Just
just like I've mentioned movies being marketed on TikTok, I truly think that if you are, whether you're doing self-publishing or traditional publishing, because I know a lot of traditional publishers, they kind of leave the marketing up to the authors now. I really think getting on TikTok and promoting your stuff is the great way to get more eyes on your books and get more sales. Thank you, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, BC, Destiny, Devin, Dirty, Wind, Dawn, Elliot, Evan, Feckless, Hopeless, Hollow, Jucker, Ray, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lauren, Lan, Lex, Lisa, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew, S, Mimo, The Red, Michael, Michael, Jane, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Wendy, Williams, Andre.